So a couple of things that come up in the history of capitalism, and I, I don't think it's really relevant for what we call capitalism, but it comes up a lot. And I wanted to know if you'd looked into these and had any thoughts. And that's kind of the mercantilist stuff, like the, the big trading companies, like the East India Trading Company or the Hudson's Bay Company that kind of owned territories they were in. And they they were private companies, but they had their own militaries. They invaded countries. They did all these crazy things. And um, kind of the related thing that I was thinking about was the opium wars, where England forced China to accept the opium trade. So it's like, yes, we have the right to trade what we want in your country, which is a very strange idea. So, yeah, so I'm not sure what the question is. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on this whole mercantilism and, and um, those what are what are considered companies in a sense. By yeah, I a mean, lot of people and they are, you know, they're just companies that were granted monopolies by government that were assigned responsibilities by government. And then um, uh, and then, in a sense, government turned a blind eye to these companies violating individual rights on a massive scale, certainly the West Indies company in India and so on. Um, they're a historical mistake. They happened, obviously, but it, it's kind of sad because partially they gave markets a bad name and they get capitalism a bad name, even though it's not capitalism. We know that a lot of the rest of the world doesn't. Um, they did bring... Um, they did bring kind of Western civilization or certain ideas of Western civilization, Western education, um, Western technology, uh, Western knowledge to the far reaches of the earth. And some of the, some of the cultures that gained that benefited from it. Although again, I'm, I'm not sure they benefited as much as they also lost. So it's, it's, it, it wasn't a voluntary trade, obviously one culture imposed itself on the other. Uh, so, so I think, I think it's, it's a, it was probably inevitable that it would happen because there was not a lot of understanding of freedom, free markets, capitalism, any of that back then. Uh, the West was kind of just trying to figure stuff out as they went along. They didn't have a good understanding of economics. This is before Adam Smith. This is before a lot of the great economists wrote and, and taught and, and, uh, and, and we gained an understanding of what was going on. So it, it, it's a period of time that is very mixed uh, where, uh, and, and a lot of those companies like the uh, disappeared or at least shrunk dramatically once their monopoly power was taken away from them. That, that is once they were allowed to properly compete with other companies that were established under freedom to compete against them. So um, I think that's what I have to say about that. I'm sure there's more to say probably to all show just on that what am i yeah, missing I think, it, I think it's related to the idea too of, of colonialism like in in academia like the the biggest crime in the world is colonialism yeah but, and, it, but they but, but they never say what's wrong with colonialism yeah. and the, the thing that's wrong is that they didn't give the people the rights that they should have in the countries they went to yeah like, but if, of like course, if england had come to the u.s and given people rights no problem sure but the, and and of course but the, it's more complicated than that because historically they didn't have the concept of rights. And historically, they right. didn't have rights in their own country. So what were they giving right. to these other countries? So the whole approach to judging history from the perspective of knowledge, full knowledge, is ridiculous. Right? You have to judge history in, based on the context of the time. And there were no rights. There was no concept of rights. There wasn't this idea of rights. They were struggling to figure out what to do. They discovered new land. They discovered, you know, they went to India. They discovered the stuff. They thought there was a lot of potential in India if they sent, they established a company that was responsible for trade and they established a beachhead there. And then there were problems in India and they couldn't secure the trade. So they sent some, so they allowed the company to have mercenaries that, you know, and, and sent some troops. And then it kept getting out of hand. But it wasn't at no point did they sit down and say, colonialism, huh? Good thing, bad thing. What does it mean? How do we deal with it? You know, what are rights? Should we give them rights? Should we? All of that context comes later, looking backwards. It, right. 
can't be there in the 18th century. It just doesn't exist. The Enlightenment is just happening. These kind of ideas. Now, you're ready in the late 18th century are starting to get critics of colonialism, critics of these monopolies, Adam Smith and others, and they should have responded faster to the critics. But the idea that they had a fully formed moral view and then they went over there and um, they just uh, uh, chose to be evil. That's just childish. Uh, it's modern historian um, exposed reading. It's these are complicated things for a, a people that for people who did not know much better, who did not know much more. Right. I think one of the great examples of the historical context is Columbus. Yeah. I mean, Columbus came over to the world and then treated people poorly. Yeah. But like, how are the people treated back in Spain and Portugal? And the answer is poorly, right? Very little course, difference. And the reason he treated them poorly is because of religion, which nobody ever says. Yeah. Well. Exactly. Nobody ever blames religion for it. So, yes, context. We started off the program with context. It's all about context. You have to have the proper historical context to be able to judge these things and to be able to put a proper estimation on them. Yeah, it would be great if you did a whole show on this. I think it would be an interesting topic. Yeah, good. Good. I'll make a note of that. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.